We've all been alerted by her now. <laughs> and, uh, and then um, we have the, the chat open to the side here. So um, anyone, or if you don't have it open, it's at the bottom there with a the little kind of comment bubble above it. Um, feel free to start, you know, as we go through the presentation today, um, to go through and to, you know, add in any of your questions um, in there. I'm going to leave some time for a QA and a at the end. So we can go through some questions that we have together, and um, and then I'll kind of start there in the questions that I'm that I'm looking for. Um, if you you're not able to access it and you have any issues um, with it, then um, then I'll leave, you know I'll leave some time open for some hand raising, um, and we can go through questions later on. Mm -hmm. So, all right, let's get this started. <laughs> Great. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Give me one second, everyone. And I'll, uh, I'll start the slideshow here, too. All right. And I'm hoping everyone can see it here now. <laughs> I think I've got some head nods. We're good. All right. Great. I like I keep seeing uh, a couple couple people here. So you're you're my helpers. <laughs> so you're going to make this uh, slideshow available? Yes, download? I can try this. I, I'll have to see. I don't have access to everyone's emails myself, but I can make sure I can reach out to the the Bafford team and make sure that they can share it along with everyone too. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. So, well, thank you all so much for joining in today for our webinar. Um, I am Marissa Eigenbrood. I'm our senior vice president here at Smith Publicity, and I've been with Smith for, for 12 years. Um, in my roles here at Smith, I've been a publicist, I've been part of our business development team, and in my current role, I do a, a lot of work throughout our team in, in overseeing our publicity, administrative, and business development department, and, uh, and really work with our authors on Kind of identifying their their path with marketing and publicity and how we might best work together. So today we're going to do a book promotion kind of publicity and marketing 101. We're going to cover a lot of ground. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if we get toward the end and I'm scrambling through the last few slides but I tried to include a lot of great content here um, but I want to make sure that everyone knows I'm going to share some resources at the end. And I always welcome the opportunity to connect with anyone directly too. So I'll share my email address at the end as well. Um, so a little bit more about Smith Publicity. We have been around since 1997. So we're celebrating 25 years next year. Very excited about that. Um, from, thank you very much for the applause. <laughs> from, the, from the very beginning, you know, Smith Publicity has always been focused on promoting authors, experts, and publishers. We work with everyone from first time self-published authors all the way up to traditionally published authors who are on their you know, 10th book. Um, and we'll even work with some publishers on some of their, their direct coordination of publicity and marketing as well. So we really cover the gamut in terms of the types of authors we work with and the genres that we work with as well. We do cover pretty much every genre at Smith except for poetry a really unique space and, and there's some really amazing uh, individual publicists that focus in that space that we love to refer people to. But otherwise, um, whether it's fiction, nonfiction, cookbooks, children's memoirs, um, we work with it at Smith Publicity. Short stories? Short stories, we do work, just do some short story work as well. I heard that in there. <laughs> so um, today I'm going to talk about the stages of book promotion. When we talk about book promotion, I think about that as publicity and marketing. And those two worlds are, are definitely different from one another. But promotion kind of captures all of it together. When we're thinking about marketing, when we talk about kind of our marketing efforts, we're really thinking about how you're directly reaching your audience. So, you know, marketing is going to be a platform or a channel through which you're actually directly connecting with, with your audience, with your potential reader. That's going to be your social media platform, your website. It could be a newsletter or a blog that you host. Maybe your own podcast, too. That's where you are speaking and directly reaching out to that audience. Outside of, oops, let somebody else in real quick. Um, outside of marketing, we also have the publicity piece, which is really a big part of what we focus on at Smith. And that is very much 
Um, that's very much a piece where there's a middleman between us and the audience, and that's going to be the media. That's your your newspapers and magazines, radio, TV, your podcasts, your online media, and your bloggers and such. And so having you know all of these pieces as part of your your book launch puzzle, um, and not even just launch. I want to kind of be careful with that word a little bit here in that. If you happen to be post-launch, this conversation is still for you, too. There are still many things you can do if your book is already available to, to the world, to the market. Um, but, you know, in building out your puzzle of how you plan to engage with your readers, you want to have a lot of these key marketing and publicity elements that we're going to talk about today included within. So, um, you know, really, when it comes to, to promotion, when it comes to your publicity and marketing activity, it really can begin at any stage. It's really never too late to start engaging with your ideal reader. And so I encourage you to, as we're gonna, we're gonna talk about, you know, pre-launch for a little bit here first, but if you happen to be post-launch, just know that there's specific information coming for you. And a lot of what we're talking about in the pre-launch stages can apply to post-launch as well. So as I said, we're gonna jump into pre-launch first here because when it comes to releasing a book, your pre-launch stage offers so many wonderful book-centric opportunities. There's a lot of really great places to be able to position the book as an upcoming release when you're in the pre-launch stage and to really start to build your network, build your following, build your audience in a lot of those great ways. So, social media. Oops, sorry. I'm just gonna ask everybody to stay on mute, please. Um, so, social media. We're gonna we're gonna talk a little about first, and I'm sure you know there's a, a few people who maybe are on video right now who are rolling their eyes or who are you know giving me a sigh. <laughs> oh, social media. You know, it's that it's that burden that we all feel that we have to do, um, and it is a necessary evil in in so many ways. But I think, you know, what's so important with social media is to really take your time in figuring out where are the right channels for you to be spending your time. You know, when you're executing social media activity, you don't have to be everything for everyone. And that can really apply to all of your marketing and publicity activity. It becomes very overwhelming very quickly to try to be everything for everyone, to try to make your message connect to every type of demographic, every interest, every audience out there. And so it's really important at the forefront of any of your activity to really think about where does my target audience live and how do I want to engage with them? Uh, so when it comes to social media, we really want to think about where your target audience will live through certain platforms. For example, if you have a book that's kind of in the health and wellness or self-help space, maybe if you have a cookbook, Instagram is really the best place for you to spend your time because that's a world where there's a lot of conversation going on around health and wellness. There's a lot of influencers in that space. It also is a very visual platform. So if you have a very visual, heavy project, it allows for a lot of engagement in that way. If you have more of a business-centric book where you're hoping to use your book as a business card, maybe to lead to more consulting or speaking engagement, then LinkedIn is going to be a great place for you to build your thought leadership and your expertise. As a fiction author, you know, a few of these are actually really great opportunities. But Goodreads and Facebook in particular are usually best in being able to really build up that fan base. And with Goodreads being able to connect with others who are also part of your genre. Um, Goodreads is really a, a much more prominent platform for our, um, our fiction and children's markets in particular. When it comes to social media, if you are in those pre-launch stages, ideally if you can start work there at least one year before your publication date, that is always ideal. You know, social media is very much, you know, as it's said here, it's social. It's something that should be organic it's something that should grow over time that is not, you know, someone's going to notice really quickly if, you're, if your followers are purchased or if, you know, you are posting a lot but don't have the engagement there. So really it's about, you know, that quality and building and co collecting followers who are really interested and engaged in your content. That, that's going to be really important. 
Um, and that's going to take time, you know, really finding where those audiences are living, where they're sharing their information, where they're collecting their information, and how you can best connect with them um, is going to take time to figure that out. And it's, you're going to try a number of different things in, in getting to that point. So that's why giving yourself as much time as possible to start building up that audience and building up that attention and then keeping those people engaged over that time is really important. You want to develop that authentic connection and that trust too with your audiences so that when the time then comes that you say, okay, I'm ready to start sharing, you know, the news about my book with the world, they're already going to be ready and excited about, about assisting you and supporting you through that launch process. Outside of your target audience, in that important identification piece there is going to be identifying your author voice and your author brand too. So when we think about those two elements, your author voice, you know, is really going to be, need to be consistent. And again, same with your brand too, consistent across all of your platforms. That's going to be, you know, maybe there's certain phrases, certain words that you're using frequently and that are consistent throughout, you know, all of your bios on your social media pages, certain hashtags that you're using. Um, keeping that consistency throughout is just going to create that, again, that authentic connection, that trust with your audience. I think what's even more important than, than your voice sometimes, too, is how you're able to communicate your author brand through all of your platforms. You know, that's really going to be a piece where people say, okay, you know, I know that this is connected to John Smith because I see certain colors, I see certain images, I see certain fonts that are all being used consistently throughout. So when you're developing your social media pages, your, your headers across the top of your social media pages and your website, and we'll talk about that a little more later, we really want to make sure that our, our, you know, our author brand is very much coming through and that our author brand is, um, is consistent through all of those with those colors and with those fonts and everything. That should also connect back to any other elements of your brand, like your book cover too, or any materials you might develop for your campaign along the way. So, you know, when we're talking about, I mentioned a little, little bit the, the topic of hashtags. And, you know, hashtags are also really important to creating and building audiences through social media. It's important to create and, and establish hashtags that are going to be, you know, for you. So create a hashtag that might be your book title. Create a hashtag that's going to be around, um, you know, a certain topic or, or area of focus of your book. I heard short stories earlier. So using hashtag short stories. But also it's important to look up, you know, what other authors in your space, in your genre, what, what hashtags are they using to be part of conversation? Um, you know, how are I'm, you able they, they can't hear me. I'm on mute. Why was I don't that? Pay attention. I don't know anything. Oh, I'm sorry. We can hear you. <laughs> I think I'm trying to find out who that is. Hold on one second. There we go. Um, oops, let's get there. So when we're thinking about our hashtags, you know, there's a lot of hashtags that are also used throughout the book community too. Um, looking at hashtags like hashtag bookstagrammer, hashtag um, kid lit if you have a children's book. That's why it's really important to, to get, take a look at some of those other hashtags that some of your, um, your comp titles, some other authors in your space are also using. Um, and so I did talk about the bookstagrammer world. I've mentioned that a little bit here, and that's going to go into our next slide. The bookstagrammer world has, has evolved and grown extensively over the last few years and offers a really beautiful place to build opportunities for book coverage. As you can see from the examples shared here, there are, they, they coordinate these beautiful layouts, um, really great ways to feature your, your title. And so you know, when the, the book blogger world was really the, the big popular space for so long, especially with fiction and children's and memoirs. Um, but that world has, you know, has really evolved into this bookstagrammer world too, where authors are not just, you know, they're not, or I'm sorry, uh, bloggers are not keeping their information on their blog now, but they're creating it through a, basically a book blog through these Instagram accounts. And so they can be a really great place 
to, to follow, to start following along with some of these entities, to connect with them and to see what hashtags and such they're using to utilize in your own posting as well. One of the biggest challenges when it comes to social media is what do I share? You know, <laughs> that's it. Okay, I've established my platforms. I've got my profile set up here. I have, you know, my bio set up with, within Instagram or LinkedIn or whatever it might be. You know, now what am I sharing? It doesn't always have to be something new from you all the time. And I think that's so important to emphasize here. It can feel very overwhelming to feel like you have to write every single post, write every single piece of content that you're sharing. And so I think it's really important to emphasize some of these other opportunities where you can be, you know, sharing content that's not always developed from yourself. It might be, you know, maybe you're an author in the self-help arena. Maybe it's a book around anxiety. Um, if you've recently read a really great article from Psychology Today, you might share that article and maybe provide a little bit of your own commentary and thoughts and sharing that article at the top. Um, that's a great way to show your, that you're staying ahead of your industry, that you're staying ahead of your, your topic um, and that you're not just ending with the pages of your, your book. You might include quotes uh, from your book, from reviews that you've gotten, or from, um, from others that you've found to be inspiring that maybe connect to your genre. A really great program I highly encourage you to utilize if you're not using it already is called Canva. That's C-A-N-V-A, -A, so Canvas without the S. And Canva is a really great way, is a really great platform. They offer a free option where you can create great visual collateral for your, for your account. So you might, instead of just posting a quote, you might put this quote into a really great graphic that you can then upload to one of your platforms. And, and then, you know, it's just creating another great visual element. Um, you might share book reviews of, of a similar genre of your own. Sharing and supporting other authors in your space is such a key piece to building author community and building author support with one another. And there's gonna be some other initiatives we're gonna talk about later where, again, the support of one another is so important to that. Lastly, photos. They don't always have to be of your face or the food that you've eaten that day. <laughs> Feel free to take a picture. Hey, my novel is set in Paris. I found this really great photo online. There are so many wonderful um, channels through which to, to find free photos to use. Um, and so kind of looking through those and finding photos that connect to your content um, is really important, but also, you know, be authentic too. Maybe share one of yourself, share one of your dog with the, your book next to it or another book that you enjoyed reading recently. Um, I think the more authentic you're coming across, the more people are gonna wanna stay engaged with you for the long term. Outside of building up your following and engaging with your audience, some other social media activity that's important to keep in mind is kind of reaching out to some of those kind of that are a part of the publicity world a bit more so. So as you're thinking about, you know, where does my book fit into? You know, where can I start to identify some of, of where my readers are getting their news? It might be a certain blog. It might be hey, the New York Times book review section, there's no harm in, in reaching far and reaching big. Start following those contacts, not just the New York Times book reviews account, but maybe start to look at some of the reviewers that are reviewing your genre in particular in those outlets. It's always gonna be part of the review there to say that, you know, uh, Deb Englander, you know, reviewed this particular book and, you know, and start following her as well and engage. The, the sooner that your name and your voice is getting in front of them, the better, because that's going to be even more recognizable when the time comes that, you know, your book is going to be positioned for review at that later stage. Um, think about following those you wish to endorse your book too. And we're going to talk about endorsements a little bit later on. But, you know, again, those that you want to support your book, similar authors as yourself of all different levels. Again, shoot for the stars, but also, you know, connect with those who might be upcoming like yourself too, so that you can support one another. And again, starting that activity early on and continuing, you know, like through all of that process, that consistency is so critical. I can't emphasize enough how important it is that we build out that, that author brand, that authenticity on the front end, and that the consistency of your content and your messaging continues through, throughout your launch and beyond as well. 
a big piece of creating consistency and helping yourself be more consistent is by creating an editorial calendar for yourself. So really identifying where are some natural places where my book message might fit in. Um, thinking about where, where do I wanna see my book fitting into? Um, you know, when we, when we start to think about where our book should live, where should my book be a part of the conversation? If you initially try to think about that and say, well, I think it should be, you know, the Oprah, Oprah's, you know, magazine, and I think it should be on Ellen. Um, then let's take a step back really quickly and really think about where our audience lives because, you know, it's very common that we want to shoot for the stars, but that's not always where our audience is actually getting the recommendations for new, new titles to read, where they're finding recommendations for new books for their children or for their loved ones. Um, or, you know, where they're wanting to engage with individuals. So it's really important to take that step back and really identify some of those core target audience opportunities that you can, you can connect with. When we're thinking about an editorial calendar, it's not just about social media, but really thinking about how it can impact your launch overall. One really powerful way of doing that is actually connecting your book launch date with potentially an awareness month a seasonal tie-in, a holiday of sorts, if there's a connection to that with your book. So if you have a book where it's your memoir and you're telling your story about you know, your, your battle with breast cancer, let's say, then consider launching your book in October around Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Um, if you're releasing a children's book, maybe think about releasing it around you know, the back to school season or right before the holidays so you can take advantage of that holiday gift, gift buying season. Maybe you're releasing a book about kind of romantic relationships and, you know, the self-help book in that space. Well, Valentine's Day is a great place for that. Um, and then with self-help, you know, the new year or the spring reinvention time is a great opportunity for those types of titles. So think about, you know, when will the media, when will the world be most interested in this subject matter potentially? And how can I connect to that? I think too with fiction, it's really important to think about, you know, is my book a, a great beach read? Should I release it, you know, maybe in, in April or May to get people kind of excited and interested in it as they might take on vacation with them? And, and yes, we are, we're going to get to go on vacations again pretty soon. I think we're all excited about that. <laughs> so, you know, really take the time to, to research, um, you know, where, where it might be a good fit for your book to land, not just with outlets, but kind of within the time of year as well. The other thing that I think is important to start thinking about with editorial calendar then is, you know, how are you creating that consistency and setting certain expectations with your audience and yourself in terms of when you're delivering content to them. You don't need to post every day with most platforms. Twitter does require a lot more consistent engagement. It is, it is a multi, you know, posting per day um, opportunity there. But with all of our other platforms, posting two to three times a week can be sufficient in building that engagement. So, you know, it's really easy to say, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna plan to post, you know, this coming Saturday. Things get in the way, we forget to post, and now we've gone a whole week without posting content. So that's where it's great to think about, you know, what are some, some consistent reasons that I might be posting? Uh, maybe, you know, with my book, every Wednesday, I wanna do Wisdom Wednesday, and I'm gonna post something that I can share on that particular day. Uh, maybe you're writing a memoir about your childhood growing up in New York City. Are there some really great photos you can share for Flashback Friday? And every photo you're sharing, you know, you're sharing an old childhood photo, or even maybe it's not a, a personal photo, but it's an older photo from your neighborhood you grew up in. So identifying that, you know, every Monday I'm going to post something, and it's going to be this type of content. Every Wednesday I'm going to do this, it's this type of content. Every Saturday it's this that not only keeps you accountable, but it also creates that, that expectation with your audiences to say, okay, I'm excited to go to John's page today because I know he's gonna be posting something about this on, you know, on Wednesday. So your, your network is gonna be a really important piece of getting started with social media and your marketing activity, and then being able to elevate it from there. So when you think about where to start with, with your network, start with what's obvious. Friends, family, professional networks, and even your own local community. 
whether that be through, you know, writers groups or readers groups, um, like-minded writers to yourself could be, you know, authors who are in the same space as you. Connect with them first, start to bring them in, invite them in to like your pages, to be connected to you. And then it'll be much more natural for it to continue growing from there by, by word of mouth as well. Going back to your, you know, that, that obvious network, those individuals also have the opportunity to be your street team. So as you're getting ready to launch your book, think about how they can, you know, they can help you in different ways along the way and how you might call upon them. So as you're getting ready to kind of assemble that street team, you might, you know, tell them, hey, I'd love to call upon you a month before the book's going to come out to share it on your social media platform. Um, to maybe send something out through your email list that you might have or, you know, come, come launch day in the week after, I'd love for you to review on Amazon during that time. Um, that group, you know, the more we can get them ready and committed and, and armed with the right materials too to be able to support you, the more likely they're going to want to, they're going to be ready to do so when the time comes. So I mentioned we jump into author websites. I'm asked so often, do I need to have a website for myself, my book? And the answer is yes, you really do. It's so important as an author to develop an author website for yourself that is a home base for readers, for media, for interested publishers, whoever it might be to come and see your content and see everything in one space together. I'm also asked often, should my website be about my book or should it be about me? If you have in your mind that this, you know, this might be my first of many books, then an author website is very important because you don't want to have to start from scratch every time. The same thing goes for social media. It should be about you as opposed to a book centric page. If you think this might be your only book, but your goals are around, you know, driving attention to you as a speaker or not just the success of the book by itself, then it's also important to have more of an author site because you're going to want to share information again about yourself, about your speaking kind of platform and other similar, other similar topics. So I have here kind of a quick overview. This is one of our, our past clients, Lisa Cohn, and, uh, and information about her book. So there's some key elements here that you'll see. Right at the top, how to connect. You're going to spend all that time on social media, as we just discussed. We want to make sure that, you know, those social media platforms are shared, that people have access to them. I always encourage, too, that you not only share those social media platforms, you know, right prominently toward the top of your author website, but make sure they're also following through each page of your site, too. That anywhere someone goes, they can consistently stay connected to you. Same thing with the newsletter sign up. If you're gonna have a newsletter and have an opportunity for people to stay in touch with you on updates about the book too, it might not be a newsletter, but just updates on the book as you're getting ready for launch. Having that newsletter or that sign up section follow you through each page is also a really great piece to have um, throughout. A last piece that I, I will always encourage carrying through all the pages and it's not mentioned here in the details, but it's book purchasing information. The, we, the last thing we want to do is have someone not be able to find the Amazon link, not be able to find your Barnes and Noble link or find a quick way to purchase the book. And so through every page of your site, it's important to have a buying link or a, you know, some buying information for being able to purchase the book. But as you can see with Lisa's site, there's some really great tabs across the top there, her homepage. About, about Lisa, you know, you want to be able to give information, you want to know who they're connecting with and why they should, you know, why you have the credentials or you have the interest or the, where your inspiration came from in writing about this particular topic. Information about the book is important there, having a media page, and then if you plan to do events, an events page as well there too. And if you're doing this from more of a platform development standpoint, some of our nonfiction authors are often doing that. Again, I mentioned earlier for more using the book like a business card for some more kind of new business or speaking opportunities, then you're going to want to add in a, you know, a tab here that talks about your services or your speaking as well. So that's all really prominently featured. I think one last piece to mention here too, is if you see, you know, Lisa's book cover has these really great tones throughout that are also carried through the website too. That brand consistency mm -hmm. is there. We can see those colors and those fonts all use in consistency here. 
I'm going to speak to book endorsements really quickly because we talked about it earlier on, and uh, and they can just be a really great asset to have in your continued efforts ahead. There was a, a recent article in the New York Times that says, you know, is the book endorsement what it used to be? Basically, basically, is it is it is it dead in so many ways? And um, you know, there are definitely some benefits to having certain endorsements available to you to utilize in, you know, sharing on social media, adding to your website, utilizing in, in promotion and publicity. Um, but uh, there's, there's a different weight that's carried to them today, for sure. There's three key factors that are important to think about when we're kind of looking for who might endorse my book. It's very easy to go reach for the stars very quickly to say, I want, you know, Reese Witherspoon and I want Oprah and I want, you know, um, you know, a president to, to endorse my book. Uh, but, you know, it's going to be much more difficult to reach those individuals than it is to potentially reach others who have a, a presence in a different kind of way and can still carry, you know, a similar, similar weight. So the three factors that are important to think about when you're reaching out for endorsements are going to be either name recognition. Again, that might be Reese Witherspoon or, or Oprah or John Grisham. Um, it's going to be their title. So is their title something that might be recognizable? Are they the CEO of something? Are they a New York Times bestselling author? And then third is gonna be the entity that they're connected to. So as you can see here, we have you know, some examples of the, these endorsements. Um, Keith Ferrazzi, you know, who, many people probably don't know Keith Ferrazzi's name, but his title is pretty prominent there, number one New York Times bestselling author. And some other people might know the names of his books as well, the entity there. If we go to Christine Day, certainly CEO is very impressive. People might not know Christine Day, but they may know the company Lululemon Athletica as a well-known entity. So when you're building out your list, you know, think about who you might know who, who could have a prominent name, title, or entity connected to them first, who might be able to support you with an endorsement. Um, and then try to build out your list from there as to those that you might want to reach out to. It could be authors, again, in your genre, who are, they could be maybe what you might consider more of a mid-tier author, but they still could be really valuable in kind of connecting with the audiences that they might already have in place as well. When you're executing your endorsement outreach, timing-wise on endorsement, um, I would say it's, it's really important to get those done, you know, on the, on the earlier side so that you have them to utilize as you're moving forward. Usually endorsement outreach is going to begin, I would say somewhere around, um, you know, giving yourself five months, six, five to six months before publication date is ideal. But if you're starting sooner to publication date too, that's, that's certainly okay. When you're reaching out for endorsements, you know, consider an endorsement trade. Can you maybe write an endorsement for someone else's book if they're working on one, uh, if they provide one for you? You might also consider providing a pre-written endorsement. Time certainly becomes an issue in getting endorsements for a lot of people. And so maybe you're considering, um, you know, writing up an endorsement that's already ready to go, they can just sign their name to, and it's already pre-approved, makes it a lot faster of a process. Be sure to give a deadline for your endorsement as to when you'd want it back by, so you can utilize it for your efforts. Um, and if you have someone who says, you know, I'd prefer not to give an endorsement, you can give them some alternate options as to how they might be able to, to support you, like sharing on their social media platforms or sending out through a newsletter that they might have on their side. So we talked a lot about marketing efforts and I wanna to touch briefly on publicity in the pre-launch stages. When it comes to publicity, the soonest we really ever begin any kind of publicity effort is going to be about five months in advance of publication date. And that's gonna to be to submit the book for some select high level trade reviews. So if you're gonna be considered for a review in Publishers Weekly, in you know, Kirkus, um, these are not their indie paid opportunities but their traditional platforms. If you're to be considered for review in the New York Times book review section or USA Today book review section, then they're going to require an early copy of the book in this four to five month window in advance. That is an incredibly competitive world um, to secure those reviews. And often only traditionally published books are, are reviewed, or some, some hybrids are as well. Um, but self-published books are rarely reviewed in some of those outlets. Um, so, you know, it's important to think about, you know, do I want to hire a publicist? Do I need to have a publicist for my project? And how will they, how will they support me? 
um, you know, at Smith, we're not the right fit for everyone. There are, we, we're very fortunate in that many authors come to us all the time and there's many that we do turn away because we wanna direct them maybe to someone who might be a better fit for them if our particular strategies aren't a right fit there. And so, you know, when you're exploring your, your publicist options, whether you're six months out from publication date or two months out or a month out, you know, or even post-launch too, and you're exploring your options, some of the tips that I'd, that I'd say are important when you're having those discussions are to ask, ask about communication style. One thing that I see far too frequently in the publicity world is that um, authors are not communicated enough with by their publicists. They're not getting updates frequently. And that's something at Smith we really pride ourselves on is, is a weekly update, like have weekly calls to. And so it's really important that you're, you know, what is the communication style? How often will I hear from you? And how much will I be able to collaborate and share ideas within the, within the structure of our campaign? Because that is such a, a critical piece is being able to, uh, to have your voice heard and your ideas shared as part of, of the campaign. They don't know everything and you're ultimately the expert on your book. And so hearing those ideas is, is really important to, to that process. Um, you know, another question to ask about is going to be, you know, their experience in your genre as well. Can they maybe share some projects they've worked on that have been in a similar genre as yourself? Um, and you wanna make sure that they have the experience, not only the, the contacts in that space, but also that they understand how to pitch media who's gonna be interested in that, that world. Um, you know, what is their approach to publicity? At Smith, we take an approach that's very balanced between the book and the author together in many ways, where other agencies really run full force with just the book and don't really focus on the author as much. And that, that to us is very important to connect back to your goals for your book and how do we make sure that our strategies align in that way. And I think it's important too to ask with our team structure. You know, what is, what's, what's our team like and um, who will you be connecting with regularly? Oops, I don't want to skip that one. So when you're going through all this publicity activity, if you decide to do things on your own, it's so important to have a press release. Um, you know, it's really, you know, a press is going to be maybe one to two pages long, and it's going to be this succinct release that's going to really detail what's in your book, kind of a summary of the content or the story within these main characters. Um, if it's a nonfiction book, some of the key talking points, some of the key takeaways of the book, and then making sure your bio is included and your contact information as well. So keeping it nice and interesting, but having that, that one solid document that, you know, you never want to go to someone and say, hey, if you want to learn about my book, if you want to, you know, experience it, go and read the whole thing. Because they're probably not going to have the time for that. So this is your opportunity to give a quick, a quick glimpse into what's inside your book and why you think it would be um, of interest to their particular audience. All right. We talked a lot about pre-launch. So I know we're already at, at 1.43. I want to make sure we have time for questions as we go forward. Um, and I can run a little bit over the hour if everyone's able to, to hang with us here too. Um, but as we go into the launch phase, I want to re-emphasize what I said at the beginning in that, you know, if you're one month before your book is coming out or your book came out a year ago, it's not too late to start those social media activities. It's not too late to start thinking about, you know, where is my target audience getting their information and, and where can I start to connect with some, some key bookstagrammers or some key bloggers, maybe the right podcast as well. So as you're getting ready and you're gearing up for your launch, um, you know, know that you're not limited to that pre-launch phase. It's also, you know, really important to talk about the fact that, that you're not just limited to launch week either. I like to think of your book launch as the birthday of your book. You know, it's, it's, it's its first day out in the world. It's its first day out in the market. And it's only gonna continue growing and evolving from there. And so you have, there's so much runway beyond your publication date to continue building attention and interest. And it doesn't just stop on publication date. <laughs> so, some of the things that we're thinking about around, uh, around you know, kind of launch or post launches, you know, if we didn't get the chance to do those long lead reviews, is to maybe explore some alternate ways to garner reviews and coverage for your book. That will be through. 
Oh, if you want us to do this, you know, give me one second. There we go. Um, that's going to potentially be through some of your bloggers, your bookstagrammers again. Some of them are going to require that really long lead time to connect. Um, you know, again, Goodreads, discussion groups, another great place to go back to. You'll see I have a number of, uh, of, of logos highlighted here. These are some of our paid um, opportunities that you can explore for some reviews as well, which can just give you a nice um, leg up. Midwest Book Review is actually not a paid opportunity, but a great, well-respected um, entity in the, the book world that you can submit to post-publication um, that we often like to take advantage of within our campaigns. Um, you know, you've taken the time to identify, you know, as we talked about earlier with social media, you've taken the time to identify who those target outlets are, who are those key reviewers. So when the time comes that you might wanna reach out to them to share news of your book, be sure to personalize. And the last thing you want to do is take a blanketed email and then send it out to every single person. But, you know, you've done all this research, really say, hey, I saw that you recently reviewed this book. I think you'd like mine as well. Or, you know, I saw that you, you'd like to cover climate change and my book speaks to that particular topic. You know, and, and maybe even highlight a certain section of your book that you think would be appealing to them. Um, you know, again, you've taken that time the media and these reviewers and all, they're gonna really appreciate that you're taking the time to personalize that outreach. And that, that's my publicist approach is, is how you build relationships with the media. Um, that's a key component of our work is of that tailored outreach personalized to you know, each content. You can do it in groups too. If you say, hey, there's 10 reviewers here that are all in a really specific subgenre, I can kind of share the same piece with them too, um, potentially. So I'm going to speak a little bit to some, some changes to the world of book publicity that's really exciting for, um, for the book world, for authors that we've worked with recently. Um, so our streaming interviews over the last few years have just grown exponentially. There's media entities that fully live online, um, such as you know, Cheddar TV is one of them, um, where you know, that's where inter authors are interviewed. Sorry, I'm not sure where the, the noise is coming from. Um, so, you know, there's entities where they're, they're fully living online to be able to share this information and to, to broadcast. Um, of course, there are social media platforms. We're often coordinating Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram Live um, with media entities as well. So these are just great alternate video platforms that have been established over the last few years. Um, and then, of course, we're seeing alternate audio, too, where apps like Clubhouse um, and the expansive world of podcasts. Uh, there's so many great opportunities within the world of podcasts to be able to take advantage of. And so, you know, that's a space that we focus on heavily at Smith and we encourage our authors to really focus on too. And that is something you can do on your own. Start to research, you know, some podcasts that are in your space. Um, there's a great uh, resource called Listen Notes that you can utilize for researching certain podcasts. Um, and, and again, you can book yourself on certain podcasts as well. Within the fiction and, um, and children's book world in particular, but some other genres as well, cover reveals have become really big. So if you are in the pre-launch stages of your book um, and you haven't yet shared your cover with everyone, you may have the opportunity, again, fiction, this is a really big space, where if we're working with someone early on, you might get the chance to reach out to a certain bookstagram or reach out to a certain blogger or even a larger site like, um, you know, like a, a bigger fiction site or such that would want to coordinate a cover reveal of your, of your book. Um, and then even trailers sometimes are being shared on an exclusive basis too. If you do decide to develop a book trailer, I have mixed thoughts on book trailers, I'll say. Sometimes they're beneficial, sometimes they're not really genre dependent. Um, but there are certain entities uh, with public, within publicity where they're going to want to share an exclusive trailer, be the first one to share the trailer. So electronic cell sheets are also a really great tool to have on hand. They're really fantastic for our podcast because they're, you know, again, you're providing all of your information in a succinct kind of clear way. Um, they can be really great to share if you're going out to community outreach, to libraries and bookstores, being able to share this really great vibrant, you know, kind of material in this way. Um, and, you know, you can kind of see some of the core elements that are included, book cover, author, author headshot, 
your bio, a quick summary, and the core book information. For our nonfiction authors, we'll often include a kind of uh, core talking points as well in material like this. But it's another great resource to be able to have on hand in terms of, hey, we're doing this outreach. Outside of me writing the email, what, what am I sharing? And this is a great way to share succinct information about yourself and your project. Um, so just going back to that social media piece one more time, um, you know, it should be something that stays consistent well after your launch as well, especially if you're someone who has potential. I apologize if you hear the dog barking, that's actually me this time. So, <laughs> um, but, uh, but, you know, with social media, that's something that, you know, you don't want to end, especially if you're planning on writing future books, you want to keep that audience that you worked so hard to develop and so hard to engage with you for the long term. So, you know, your, your consistency might look, look, look a little different. Your content might start to look a little bit different um, than it did in your pre-launch build up to the, the release of the book. But post-launch, you get to share, you know, re really great reviews you're getting on Amazon or through the media. Um, you're get, able to share, you know, details of your endorsements, um, you know, great photos from a book launch event that you had. Um, articles that you're sharing later on too. So you're able to continue sharing a lot of great content on social and, and it's important again to keep keep that engagement going. That snowball effect is just gonna continue moving forward um, with your project well after publication date. All right, so quick summary for us here. I think you know we can all tell making a plan as ideally as, as long as possible for a book launch is is our ideal scenario here. Making a social media website, thinking about that engagement with your network, starting that plan early on is, is really important. Um, there's so many different activities that you can do pre, during, post launch that it's important to find the ones that feel right and authentic to you. You know, and lastly here, you know, nurture your fans, be consistent and authentic in building your author brand and your author voice. Um, don't be afraid to reach for the stars, but also bring yourself back down to earth sometimes too with, with those who you're connecting with. So you're not putting all of those eggs in that, that you know, high level basket. And, uh, and, and again, just, just really being yourself and being authentic through everything that you're doing is so key. Uh, I have a question, Marissa. Oh, hold on one second, please. I'm just gonna okay. wrap up here and then we're gonna take okay. questions. All Thank right, you. okay. <laughs> so um, here are some great resources. Again, I'll make sure that we share this, um, this overview with Valkers for them to be able to send out to everyone who is part of this, but some great resources to check out here today. And they did ask me to share with everyone that there are a series of services that NIST does execute through, um, through Bowker. And oh, can everyone hear me still? Yeah, okay, I think I lost my... Okay. Some battery there. So, um, let me just make sure I'm loud and clear still. Look for head nods. Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, thank you. Um, so I'm going to go back here. Um, through their myidentifiers.com website, uh, there are a series of services that we provide through, through Bowker. Um, we do execute the development of a press release or electronic shell sheet that we mentioned earlier. We also have three different marketing consultation services that we provide. Um, they're one hour marketing consultations. So we have you fill out a questionnaire beforehand. Then you go through a really detailed personalized one-on-one -on -one -one consultation with one of our team members to go through either social media promotion, where we'll take a look at your existing platform to talk about those specific to you and your genre that you might want to be working on developing. Maximizing your Amazon listing, so tweaks you can be making there to your Amazon listing and author central page, um, as well as a book marketing planner, which really goes a bit broader in terms of other industries you can focus on. So if you're interested in any of those, you can find those on myidentifiers.com and use the promo co code yeah, consult at check out. And lastly here, this is a great resource we have at Smith for more information. I encourage you to sign up for our newsletter. You'll find that on our website. We've got a podcast, blog, YouTube videos. We love to share information at Smith. 
feel free to connect with us on social media. We have Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, exactly. LinkedIn. Um, and I have the general Smith email place. here, but I am I also at Marissa at SmithCubbleCity.com. That's M-A-R-I-S-S-A. And so feel free to connect with us. Don Sheely, turn off your mic. I'm going to stop my screen share really quickly so I can pop over to. Is this one right here? Nico, you're the man. You got a job. Okay. Thank you. Great job, both of you. Thanks for doing this. Would you mute Don Sheely? I know someone who can keep up right away. I think it was Bonnie. I don't know if I'm pronouncing your name correctly, but I'll let you jump in first with yours if you'd like. Okay, so here's the thing. I wrote my first book in 1997, got it uh, in Sorry, those Maddie, times. I think I'm still was... connected to these things. Okay. Can you hear me? Hold on one second. Sorry. Let's try this again. Go ahead, Mani. Okay, so I wrote my first book, uh, uh, a life changing book covering all areas from birth till death in 1997. With great difficulty, I got it published in 2003. It became mm -hmm. a winner of uh, honorable mention at four book festivals. But, you know, things went such a way that uh, out of 1,000 copies, I still have 800 in uh, storage. So mm -hmm. I was suggested that, you know, change the uh, dust jacket and then start fresh. So my mm -hmm. question to you is... Um, I'm starting fresh. The dust jacket is made. So do I write uh, the uh, current year as the publication date or I would be writing 2003 when it got originally published? Sure, that's a great question. And I'll say in, in this case, we're kind of talking about a book that might be a little bit older at, at this time. And maybe you know we want to kind of reinvigorate it now. So yeah. the way in which to do that is, um, is really to think about launching it as a second edition potentially, or you might want to make some, some tweaks to it where you're really kind of changing a lot of different content to it. It's really depend upon how much it may have evolved since you originally wrote it. But you know, for some, even if it really the stories are the same, the, the, the content's really similar, you might write a new introduction to the book, um, maybe kind of go through the chapters, check for any you know, grammatical errors we may have missed or things like that, give it a nice little facelift um, and then potentially elevate the, the, the cover, add a new cover to it that feels maybe more current, maybe more brand centric to yourself to it this time um, and re-release it. It's gonna be really hard to build attention for a book I would say that came out in, in I think you said 2003 or 13, but either way, it's a little far, far away there um, to be able to do a lot of publicity and, and marketing work now for that, you can start doing some social media building um, at this time, but I think you'd really benefit from a new fresh launch plan ahead. Um, okay. so I would, yeah, I would go ahead and, and think about maybe kind of making some tweaks to the book itself and doing a second edition launch. So I cannot uh, make any tweaks because it's a hardcover edition. I have 800 copies sitting in the storage. So the best uh, option I had was change the dust a jacket and mm. redesign it with new synopsis, uh, new bio and all that. So that's what I did, did with a new ISBN. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I would say then that, um, you know, think about maybe kind of doing a little bit of a, of a relaunch then to your communities and such. Maybe you can't necessarily do it with a new publication date, but being able to do so through your communities and, and talking about the new elements that you've Kind of added into it might be, okay. might be a, a great entity there or a great opportunity there sounds good all right thank you you're welcome you're welcome okay. i'm gonna okay. do a quick run through some of the questions i have over here because i want to be conscious of those who have um who have added them in so i'm just doing a quick run through um let's see i see a lot of people who are doing a wonderful job of asking people to mute along the way thank you for that <laughs> And, um, oh, and then this is a really interesting question. Um, Steve Marks asked earlier on, um, building a protagonist brand as opposed to an author brand, is that a recommended approach? Um, and I would say, Steve, I think it's, it's you know, really important to say, do I plan to write more books um, in or kind of around the same protagonist or do I plan to write more books 
that maybe this protagonist is not a part of. I think it's a really unique idea to create a protagonist brand in that way. Um, but it would, I would say it would be most beneficial to do so with a, a series, if you're planning to do it around a series. Um, otherwise, if it's just one title, there may be a lot of work put into that, that uh, if you plan to write other books later on that aren't in that same space, then you, you might not, um, you know, be able to kind of keep that same connection with that, with that audience. And we'd work really hard to develop that audience and then, you know, not, not have the same kind of content to share with them again there. Um, I have another question about, um, talk about copywriting issues when it comes to sharing articles, photos on blogs. Um, it's a really, really important question. Um, when it comes to sharing articles on, on blogs, I think it's, it's best to do so where you're sharing maybe a little bit of the article and then saying to read the rest of it, go here to its original, where, where the article originated. So you always want to make sure you're giving that credit back to where it originated. Um, and so maybe again, you're sharing just the first couple of lines from it and say, you know, go read it over here. Um, the same thing would apply to an article that you might write and have published somewhere. If you publish something on medium.com, let's say, or Thrive Global, or whatever it be, then you might, um, you know, then you might kind of share a little bit of the article on your site and then encourage them to go to Medium to read the rest of your article over there. Um, and then with, with photos, I see there's some great people who have shared some, some wonderful opportunities for, for downloading free photos. Um, I'm Unsplash, a really great one over there for sure that we've utilized quite a bit. Um, so as I scroll through here, I'm gonna give a member of the audience an opportunity if we want, somebody wants to jump in with a particular question again. Um, well, I'll jump back over then to the chat. Um, I have another question about addressing the cost of hiring a publicist. This is certainly something that can range extensively, um, depending upon if you're working with an independent publicist or a larger firm, um, and really all the levels of, of what's involved within. We at Smith, we say with our campaigns, ideally an, an ideal investment for a worthwhile publicity campaign timeline, it's gonna be $7,500. And that's gonna get you at least two months of a campaign together. Um, so for others, there's, you know, for other campaigns that we build out that can reach into the 15 to $20,000 range too. It's really dependent upon all the elements that are, that are involved within that, the building out that campaign. Um, but there are other publicists that work on, on different kind of compensation structures. Some will work on pay for placement, um, you know, so it's, it's really can vary uh, based upon, upon the different individuals you're talking to and others can come in at, at lower price points as well, but still very worthwhile partners to explore. Um, of course, too, for us, we're a team of about 30. So there's a lot of different, you know, pieces of support behind the scenes that are going on with the project where an independent publicist, a freelancer, maybe someone you find on Readsy which is a really great resource for, for independent freelancers. Um, their rate might be they on an hourly basis or you know, in a different, different structure um, that might be more affordable in that way too. All right. Um, just go to the questions one more time here. Just to clarify for anyone who came in later on, we are recording this. I'll be sharing it with the Bowker team and asking them to share with everyone who, um, who has signed up. We should have all of your emails on file for those who signed up. Um, there's a lot of really great, oh, I love this question too. And this will be my last one for the day so that we can, um, you know, we can, we can wrap things up. I'm sure everybody's got things to move on to today, um, but uh, paid ads on social media, really great question, really important uh, element of your, um, your overall strategy there. And again, really thinking about where target audience lives, but a big fan of, um, of, of you know, Facebook ads in particular, because they provide a, a much more inexpensive option and you can really kind of dig in on certain demographics and audiences that you want to target. So you can get really targeted on Facebook ads and, um, and, and reach really specific people 
through those uh, through those ads. Um, I always encourage you when you're when you're building out an ad, don't just say here, look at my book, but you know include maybe a, a one line from a review that you've received, or um, you know maybe you sh share something like. It, you know, if it's already out, it has 10, you know, four stars, five stars, or whatever be on Amazon, um, you know, a five star reviewed title, something like that, just adding other elements in that just say, hey, it's not just a book here, but that here's some of the collateral, the, the credentials that it has behind it will certainly support that. Um, there are some paid advertising opportunities through other entities like LinkedIn or Instagram that can be a little more costly, um, especially if you get into, I think, with Google ads. I don't know too much about that world myself, but I understand that can get a little costly as well with pay-per-click and such. I don't necessarily know if Google ads are imp as impactful in reaching your target audience as some of the social media ones can be. Um, but alternatively, you might think about, you know, what I want to do an, an ad through a certain um, website entity that's connected to where my audience is getting their information to um, as an alternative there. So maybe it's something through a, a, a certain writer's group or um, if, they, if they take on advertising or association in that kind of way. And yes, Carla, great point there in the comments. Amazon, KDP authors can do Amazon ads too. That would be great to explore. All right. Well, um, thank you again so much, everyone, for coming together today. Um, this has been such a wonderful conversation. I feel like I've seen, you know, Massachusetts. I've seen people from all over the place. Um, it's so great. I myself am based outside of Philadelphia. Um, our company is based in Cherry Hill, New Jersey, if anyone knows the area at all. Um, and uh, But I'm still working from home. This is my home office here. That's why you heard my dog maybe in the, in the background earlier or my husband yelling at her. <laughs> and so we're excited to go back to, uh, to the office hopefully in the fall and be back together again. But for now, excited to come together on these great platforms and share information with authors like yourselves. So. Um, Great to see all your smiling faces and best of luck to all of you in your efforts ahead. I look forward to, to being connected, um, you know, if you want to reach out. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> Have a great rest of your day. You too. Thanks. Thank you. It was informative. Thank you so much. <laughs>